There was a period where I shot the shit out of film, like up here that we got all these uh, Super 8 and 16 mil reels backed up up there. There's a bunch of them on tapes all over the place. Um, a pile of Super 8 cameras. This one's really good. These are, uh, if anyone ever has one of these, they're just super lightweight. Look how slim that is. You can just almost have it in your pocket. They're very spontaneous. I think that's what's good about these cameras because you can just set the focus and... Bam. involved in skateboarding in various ways for a couple of decades now but mostly video guy I guess make skate films this is our very wise old bunny Percy right here he is somehow hanging on for dear life I couldn't even tell you how old he is because all our animals are rescues but he's literally lost the ability to move but yeah he eats and poops and seems happy so he's still going those are some of the pieces from uh, the Skate and Create project that Etnies did a few years back. My wife Sharon designed and built all these buildings. And, yeah, and here is my little office, dungeon, editing room, you know. This is what happens when you have to remove a seat from your van and you also have to figure out a new office chair. I didn't know where to put the seat. And this is my ridiculous answer. I got my chair out of my van. Stacked up some wooden blocks and put it on some wheels. Got an old board for a foot stand. And uh, it's actually quite comfortable. <laughs> when I was living back in England, um, skating a lot in the early 90s, we were all filming each other. And uh, me and my friends were doing pretty good, I guess. We were getting sponsored and people needed footage. So my sponsors would send us a camera and we'd pass it around. And we started filming and making little skate videos. This is actually the first video I did in England. It was like an independent video um, it's called Sound and Vision. Just six months of filming people around England. There was a lot of people visiting England at the time, so I just threw everyone I could possibly put in there. Mark Channer, he's like a pretty legendary UK skater, if anyone knows their UK skaters. And he's kind of the reason why I started making skate videos. That's a pretty good story right there, because um, Mark was uh, in my college, art college I went to. He did media studies, so he had access to an editing suite. And then there was another skater in our um, college called Matt Fowler, whose final project was trying to make a skate company. And so for his company, we decided just for fun to be the team riders, and we filmed each other and made a video. Um, so after that, I borrowed a friend's video camera, because I knew I had access to this editing suite, and made this little video with Mark and just the homies from England so yeah I'll dig out some footage to show you of Mark he's really awesome skater oh look how crusty the footage is look at this line 360 kick foot look at this shit the surface of that skate park is so rough and horrible too cab flip oh big pants tiny wheels I uh, had another board set up to jump onto. <laughs> Just happened to be there. And I fucked up filming the gap. Kick foot. That was a sick line. From then or now. 
Pretty soon after that, I was making my own little, you know, skate videos, and the 411 just started. So they sent me over video cameras, and uh, I started contributing to them. Pretty much from issue two, I think, right out the gate. Before then, you didn't really have a position for a filmer in skateboarding. It didn't really exist. There was people who had who done skate videos, but it wasn't something that anyone like aspired to be, you know, or not, not as far as I knew. You know, it was just the more I did it the more the need for a video guy became apparent in skateboarding. So it kind of just naturally unfolded that, you know, that there was kind of a position available to like film people. So back then in the early 90s, the, I was coming out to the States more because that's where my sponsors were and they wanted me to get more involved. And uh, so my first bait video projects were for people that I rode for as well. You know, so like the sheep video, the ATM videos, I was like on the team and also making the videos. Soon after that, I was noticing that everyone that I was filming was way better than me and I kind of felt more comfortable behind the camera. And also I was dealing with some heavy injuries, just all kinds of stuff where it was just kind of made sense and a natural transition from trying to be in front of the camera, busting my ass, and then realizing I'd just rather skate for fun. And you know, I was really enjoying filmmaking too. Basically spent the last 20 years predominantly working for Etnies and S in America, the Soltec brands. Don and Pierre have kindly given me the opportunity to kind of have free reign on a lot of the projects over the years. So I've got a lot to thank Etnies for basically because they not only got me the green cards and visas and stuff, but they stuck through it all those times when I couldn't really be as involved as I needed to be. And it's been a fun ride, especially because over the years, it's never been like one brand, one look, one feel. Like all the brands had different vibes to them. You know, they all wanted to go slightly different directions with their creativity. So it meant I could switch things up. If I had an idea that I thought was interesting, once I thought of the idea, then I'd think, all right, well, that could go for America. That'd be a good America idea, or that would be a cool idea for us, you know? Or, the variety kept it fresh. You know, when you're working on these bigger videos, the full length videos, you tend to be collaborating with somebody and luckily I had some good people to work with over the years. Um, the first full length video that we were doing right then was Manic Marty, so I got to work with Fred a lot on that. That was pretty much his video. I was just kind of helping him out on it. The next big video was uh, This is Skateboarding, and me and Minor were pretty much equal on that one. And then I did a lot of stuff with S and Anthony's over the years, and so when it came time for Stay Gold, uh, John started the video and I'd help out here and there, but then as the project developed, I'd help out a lot more, and um, that was definitely a, a really rad video to be a part of. It was really cool to help out on some of these big videos with some People who I respect a lot, you know, Fred and John, the way they film and edit, they've definitely got a really solid style and, uh, you know, been a privilege to be able to work with such rad people on good projects.
Snow White. It's gonna be alright. Over the years, there's definitely been a few projects I look back on where I feel like the stars aligned, so to speak, where everything worked well together, you know. Um, there was the skate and create where Sean Malta killed it. There was the Boxton Square one with the cardboard city that my wife built all the set design for and all the creative direction and uh, things are tough shoots, you know. You're sitting around waiting all day for everyone to set up some stupid lighting situation, blowing smoke, and it's just not ideal for doing gnarly tricks. Out of everyone, his patience and just just ease that he worked with everything and just killed it, like literally just smashed it. The skating was insane. Another good example of that was the Rain or Shine project I did with Kyle Leeper. It started off just as a joke, we'll go get some clips in the rain, haha, -ha, you know, see where that takes us. And pretty soon we were like trying to chase the rain for the next two months, trying to get more and more shots. And it was bitterly cold and horrible like at times, you know, and the dude's just falling on his face, getting right back up. and. To have that kind of commitment of someone who's like down to push it that far, um, those are the kind of projects where people on the other end of the lens are really committed. It makes me that much more psyched. Two music videos that I did that I am really can't believe I got to do them is we did one for Dinosaur Jr. and one for the Pixies. And the concept was that the band was just kind of shredding around town. Jay Maskis was skating and the other guys were BMXing. So we had stunt doubles. Kyle Leeper actually played Jay Maskis in that. And the Pixies video was uh, another random one. We actually ended up doing a lot of the art direction for that, building like these crazy heads. And I don't know, that was a good video. When I started doing this kind of thing, there wasn't even a job to pursue. It just was like this thing that kind of fell into place. The thing is, if you have good people around you to film and you enjoy it, and you can get a rapport with whoever you're filming and make cool stuff, you know, that's, that's usually where the spark flies, you know. The, the goal for me is to make something that inspires people to want to skate. Even if it's like you're watching something that you'll never be able to achieve, you know, like, but you watch it and you get psyched to want to go and just shred around. You, I don't know, you got to skate with the guys. I mean, that's half the reason why we do this is just to enjoy rolling around whenever we can. And not that I'm going to snake a session of guys are jumping down big rails or anything like that, but you know, if we're at somewhere fun, I'll, I'll get involved and then I've got to sometimes remind myself, like, oh yeah, wait a minute, you're supposed to be filming these dudes. 